Hey, good morning, good morning, good morning. This is Pastor Eric Brown with Daily Manor for your soul. Happy Tuesday to you. I pray the Lord is blessing you real good right now. Look, just want to bring you a word of encouragement. That's just something to help you along your way. And today, that word is, is providence, not coincidence. You know, it's a lot of people out there that live their life based on the simple thought that everything that happens to them is just a coincidence. It's just by happenstance. It's just something that happened. Well, I'm here to tell you today that if you're a believer in Jesus Christ, if you're a believer in, in the most high God, you know that, that you don't live by coincidence, but you live by the divine providence of God. You know, the dictionary defines providence as the protection and care of God. I'm here to tell you that God cares for you, that God loves you, that God orders your steps. The Bible says in Psalms 37 verse 23 that the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord and his delights in his ways. Well, I'm here to tell you God is... God is aware of you. God is mindful of you. God is orchestrating different things in your life uh, to bring you to an expected end. Uh, Jeremiah 29 and 11 says that God knows the plans he has for you, the thoughts he has for you, the thoughts of your good and not your evil to bring you to a victorious end. Oh, I'm just here to tell you today that, it, that your life is orchestrated by God, so it's never coincidence, but it's always God's divine providence uh, that's taking charge in your life. You know, I'm reminded of the man Jacob over there in, in Genesis chapter 46. In, in Genesis chapter 46, providence has taken Jacob to a place where he needs to make a decision and he wants to seek the Lord for the decision. But how did he get there? He was faced with this dilemma of whether or not he should go to Egypt. How did he get to that place? Well, if we look back over Jacob's life, God had always been been orchestrating his steps. God had ordered his steps. Jacob, Jacob had to go on to run from his father's house, but God was in it. God was orchestrating his steps. Jacob met up with angels and, and, and was blessed by angels and touched by angels. God was orchestrating his steps. Jacob, Jacob met and married two wives. God was orchestrating his steps. It was God's divine providence that Jacob ended up with 12 sons. Oh, oh God was orchestrating his life. And now Jacob Jacob had found himself in Canaan land. Can I tell you, Canaan was a promised land um, that the children of Israel were going to end up. Huh? It's just that, that God wasn't ready for them to be there yet. So the providence of God uh, all showed up in the form of a famine. It was a famine in the land. And, 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 and Jacob and his family were faced with annihilation. That's why they had to make this decision whether or not they were going to Egypt. But even before that, can I tell you that God's hand was already working because some years before that, some 20 plus years before that, one of Jacob's sons, his favorite son by the name of Joseph, all of a sudden went missing. Jacob didn't know what had happened. What had ended up happening was that, that Joseph's brothers were jealous of him and they sold him into slavery, but Jacob didn't know that. But can I tell you, for, for all those 20 plus years, Joseph was gone. He was in the penal system. He was a slave. He was in the penal system, but now unbeknownst, unbeknownst to Jacob, through through Joseph's odyssey and through the provision and the, and the providence of God, Jacob had Jacob's son Joseph had gone from being a slave in Egypt to being in prison in Egypt to being the second in command in Egypt. Oh, somebody need to get this. Jacob was in in charge of the supplies. He was in charge of food, and 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 and. And Jacob had sent his sons down to Egypt to get food. And Joseph recognized them. Joseph saw them. And they didn't even know who Joseph was. And Joseph sent them back to bring his father. He wanted to see his daddy. He didn't tell him what he was doing or why he was doing it. But can I tell you, that was the providence of God. Because Jacob, Jacob's son, Joseph, was in the place where he could protect the family. The family could have died in the desert. But, but there was food in Egypt. And Joseph was in charge of the food in Egypt, and now he was sending for his father. And so this is where we are. The providence of God has brought Jacob to this place, and Jacob is trying to decide whether or not I should go to Egypt. And God speaks to him, and God tells him to go down to Egypt because I am with you. Go down to Egypt because I'm going to watch over you. Go down to Egypt. I'm going to take you in, and I'm going to bring you out. Go down to Egypt, and I'm going to make a mighty nation out of you. I'm here to tell you, I'm here to tell you this was all the providence 
providence of God. Because watch this. If you go all the way back, if you go all the way back to Jacob's grandfather, um, Abraham, Abraham was promised that, that by God that he would become a mighty nation, that God would God would bring a nation forth out of his seed. Can I tell you, Abraham had 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 one son of promise. That wasn't a mighty nation. Um, then that, that son of promise was Isaac. And Isaac had two sons, but that wasn't a mighty nation. But God, God, God had set it up that Jacob, that Jacob would have 12 sons. Then you say, well, that's not a mighty nation either. And it wasn't. And it wasn't because, because when Jacob decided that I'm going to follow the hand of God, the wisdom of God, the providence of God, and go down to Egypt, Jacob only had about 70 people with him. Ah, oh, but, but can I tell you, when he got down to Egypt, God said, I'm going to watch over you. When he got down to Egypt, God said, I'm going to make a mighty nation out of you. When he got down to Egypt and when it was finally time to leave Egypt and the, because the promised land was ready and God was ready for them to go in the promised land, the providential hand of God was moving. Uh, when it was time to go, the, the children of Israel left with three and a half million people. Oh, uh, somebody needs to get that. That was all in the providence of God that took them from where they were with one person the promise was made to. And by the time Jacob went down to Egypt, and by the time Jacob and his family got finished, they were more than three million strong. Somebody need to understand how the hand of God works. See, the providential hand of God does not work in a linear fashion. It does not work in a straight line. It would be so many things going on, but they're all working out for your good. Even what the enemy brings against you, it all works out for your good because everything works out for the good of them that love the Lord and are called according to their purpose. It is the providence of God. It is providence, not coincidence. And I want you to be encouraged today because Jacob and the children of Israel got the victory because they were able to walk into the promised land. The children of Israel walked into the promised land, the land that God had promised to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob some 600 years before. They were able to walk into the promised land with the victory. I want you to get this. I want you to understand this. You might be going through some things right now. You might be dealing with some things right now that don't look like they're working out for your good. Things are happening over here. Things are happening over there. And they don't look like that they're, they're connected in any kind of way. But I'm here to tell you they are, the, they, are, they are happening for your good because it is God's divine providence. God is leading you. God is ordering your steps. God is making the crooked places straight. He's giving you the strength to climb mountains. He's, he's, he's giving you the courage to go through the valleys. He has given you the wherewithal to, to go through the valley of the shadow of death. You don't have to fear evil. You don't have to fear situations. You don't have to fear circumstances because the Lord is your shepherd and you shall not want. And it is not coincidence, but it's divine providence. So I want you to be encouraged today to know that the hand of God is on you, that the hand of God is all over you, that God is keeping you alive. He is keeping the vision alive in you. He's keeping the dreams alive in you. He is keeping the anointing alive alive in you. He's keeping that ministry alive in you, and he's making a way for all of it to come to pass uh, in your favor. I want you to be encouraged today. Keep on stepping in the Lord, because you're stepping in God's favor. You're stepping in God's will. You're stepping in God's purpose. You're stepping in God's plan, because you're stepping with God's providence. Have an awesome day. Be blessed of the Lord. Peace.